Let's take a look at futures in Java. You could also say promises for the future. In the world of Java programming, futures represent a powerful tool for asynchronous programming. They offer a way to initiate a task and then continue with other work while the task is being executed. When a task completes, the future provides a way to retrieve the result or to handle any exceptions that might occur. So what's the typical sequence of how futures work? Well, first you need to create a future, then you submit a task to it, and then you get the result. In a sense, that's it already. A future object represents the result of an asynchronous computation. It provides a mechanism to submit tasks for execution and retrieve the result at a later time, allowing for non-blocking operations and improved application responsiveness. Tasks that take too long can be cancelled, and it is also possible to define a timeout for them. Quick note to the blocking and the non-blocking functionality. When using a blocking future, the main thread will be paused and then will wait for the results of the asynchronous task to become available. The thread will not be able to execute other tasks until the result is retrieved. The get method, for instance, is a blocking operation. It will wait indefinitely until the task completes or is interrupted. So what use case does blocking have? Well, blocking futures are suitable for scenarios where the main thread needs to wait for the asynchronous tasks before proceeding to whatever comes next. For example, if you need to process the result of a database query or a network request before continuing with other logic. Then there is also the non-blocking functionality. Non-blocking futures allow the main thread to continue executing other tasks while the asynchronous task is running. The main thread can periodically check the status of the future using methods like isDone, isCancelled or get, including its parameters timeout and unit, which will wait for a specified timeout. And if the task hasn't completed within a time, it will return null or throw an exception. Now, what use cases could you think of for non-blocking operations? Let's see. Non-blocking futures are ideal scenarios where the main thread needs to remain responsive and handle other tasks while waiting for asynchronous results. For example, in a GUI application, you might use non-blocking futures to fetch data from a server without freezing the user interface. You see, choosing the right approach depends on your specific requirements and the desired behavior of your application. There could even be scenarios where you'd need both blocking and non-blocking futures. Okay, what do you think? Was this enough theory? Are you hungry for some code? All right, just as I've thought. And you don't need to type everything line by line from this video because the code used within this video can be found on GitHub. Check the video description for some links. And while doing so, hit the like button of this video. This helps this channel grow on YouTube so that more people can enjoy this type of content. All right, let's dive into the code example. All right, so the code we have here is a Maven project. Now, depending on your operating system, if you use Windows, you're gonna use the CMD files. And if you use Mac or Linux, you're gonna use the shell files. All right, let's start by creating a new class, example one, which implements the runnable interface. Here we can start right away by overriding the run method and by announcing what we do. Example one, simple task, wait for completion. Now let's create a new executor service, which we call executor. What we place in this variable will be a new single thread executor. Now let's create a new task of type callable, which handles integer, in which we provide a nameless method, in which we tell our thread to sleep for 2000 milliseconds. After having done so, we return 42. As the thread can be interrupted, we need to create a try catch context around the thread. And in case there is an interruption, we throw a new runtime exception, providing the interrupted exception. Okay, now let's create a new future, which we get by submitting the task to the executor. Now we still want to have our integer result, and it all comes down to having this result in a new variable that we call result of type integer, in which we place the result of the future by making use of the get method. After having done so, we print it to the terminal, result, and then the integer result. Now the get method can be interrupted, but can also run into an execution error. To catch that, we place it into a try catch context, which will catch the interrupted exception and the execution exception. And if that happens, we print an error, error occurred, message, and then the exception message. Now after the try catch context, we either have our result or an error. 
In any case, we have to shut down the executor. And that's just about it. Now let's put it all together in the main method. First we create a new instance of our example1 class and then we run it by calling the run method. Now let's build and run the application. And here we can see the result 42. All right, it's time for another example. For that, let's create another class, example2, which also implements the runnable interface, which in turn brings us to implement the run method. Let's also announce what we are doing, example2, task setting atomic value, wait for completion, and then we again create another executor service, which we create by calling new single thread executor. And then we define our variable, which we call result holder, which has the type atomic integer. And we place a new instance of atomic integer. Now let's create a new runnable task, which consists of an anonymous method that tells the thread to sleep 2000 milliseconds, just to simulate that it does something. And after having done so, we set the atomic variable to 42. Because this can be interrupted, we built a try-catch context around it. And in the case that it is interrupted, we print an error, setting result holder interrupted, message, and then the exception message. After having done so, we create a new variable future of type future without defining the type that is handled, in which we place the result of the submit method of the executor service, providing the task that we just created. In order to wait for the task, we again call the get method. After having waited for the get method, we print the result of the atomic integer, printing result and then result holder, and then we use its get method. Because the get method can run into an interrupted exception or an execution exception, we place it into a try-catch context. And in a case that the error happens, we print an error, error occurred, message, and then the exception message. After having done all that, we shut down the executor. All right, let's put it all together in the main method. Let's create a new instance of example2, and then run it. Let's build and run the application. And here we can see the result, which is now placed in the atomic variable, 42. All right, let's create a third example. For that, let's create a new class, example3, which implements the runnable, which in turn brings us to implement the run method. Now let's announce what we are doing, example3, simple task, completion cancellation. So what we want to do here is simulate how to cancel a task that is currently running. Let's create a new executor service in which we place a new single thread executor. Let's create a new variable task of type callable handling integer in which we place an anonymous method which again tells a thread to sleep for 2000 milliseconds and after having done so returning 42. Because of the interrupted exception let's place it into a try catch context and if the exception happens let's throw a new runtime exception in which we place the interrupted exception. Now let's create a new variable future of type future handling integer, in which we place the result of the executor service submit method, which takes the task as a parameter. Now at this point, this is already running, executing first thread sleep for 2000 milliseconds, and after that returning 42. But in the meantime, we want to cancel the execution of this task. For that, let's create a new thread, in which we provide an anonymous method, which tells this thread to sleep for 800 milliseconds, and after that, we print that we cancel the task, followed by really canceling the task. And as the sleep method can be interrupted, we need to place it into a try-catch context. In the case that this happens, we print an error, cancel thread interrupted, message, and then the exception message. And we also need to start this thread by calling its start method. After having done that, we create a new variable of type integer, in which we place the result of the future by calling its get method. And after that, we print the results with result and then the integer result. Because this get method can run in either an interrupted exception or an execution exception, as well as a cancellation exception, we place all this in a try catch catch context. First handling the cancellation exception, printing to the terminal task was cancelled, and in a case the interrupted exception or the execution exception happens, we print error occurred message and then the exception message. And after having done all that, we shut down the executor. All right, let's get back to the main method and put it all together. Let's first create a new variable example3, in which we place a new instance of example3, and then run all that. Now let's build and run the application. And here we can see, first we execute the task, then it is cancelled, and as this happens, it tells us that the task was cancelled. All right, let's create another example. For that, we create a new class, example4, which again implements the runnable interface, 
and the run method. Let's announce what we are doing. Example 4, simple task, completion, timeout. So what we do here is something that's a bit similar to the example 3, where we cancel the task, but in this case we are running into a timeout. For that, let's create a new executor service calling new single thread executor. And then we create a new variable task of type callable handling integer, in which we place an anonymous method. Now we tell the thread to sleep for 2000 milliseconds, and after having done so, returning 42. We place these two into a try catch context, and in the case that the interrupted exception happens, we throw a new runtime exception in which we place as a variable the interrupted exception. Now we create a new variable future of type future handling integer, in which we place the result of the executor service. To get our result, we create a new variable result of type integer, in which we place whatever comes back from the get method, which will wait for the task 800 milliseconds. After having done so, we print the result to the terminal, result and then the integer result. Because of the get method, we place all this in a try catch catch context, catching the timeout exception, the interrupted exception and the execution exception. In the case of a timeout exception, we print to the terminal task has timed out. And in the case of the other exceptions, we print an error to the terminal, error occurred, message and then the exception message. After having done all that, we shut down the executor. Let's put it all together in the main method. For that we create a new variable example4 of type example4, in which we place a new instance of example4. After having done that, we call the run method. Now let's build and run the application. And here we can see that our task of 2000 milliseconds has timed out after 800 milliseconds. Ok, let's create a fifth example. For that we create a new class example5, implementing the runnable and then the run method. Let's announce what we are doing, example 5, simple task, non-blocking completion. What we want to simulate here is start a task, do a few things and then wait for the result of this task and after that do something again. It's going to be clear in a second. Let's create a new variable executor of type executor service in which we place a new single thread executor. Let's also create a task of type callable handling integer in which we place an anonymous method. This method starts by telling the thread to sleep for 2000 milliseconds and after having done so, returning 42. We will also place it into a try catch context and in the case that this was interrupted, we throw a new runtime exception providing the interrupted exception. Now we create a new variable future of type future handling integer in which we place the result of the submit method. Now this is the moment where we could do anything that we want because now the task is running. And for the time being, we can check if the task is already done. For this, we create ourselves a while loop, which continues to run as long as the task is not done. In every iteration, we first print out the message waiting for task to complete, and then we sleep for 500 milliseconds. This can run into an interrupted exception, so we need to catch it in a try catch, printing out the message, thread sleep interrupted, message, and then the exception message. After the while loop, we create a new variable result of type integer, in which we place the result of get. And after that we print it to the terminal, result and then the integer result. This also needs to be placed into a try catch context, catching interrupted exception and execution exception. And in the case that happens, we print to the terminal, error occurred, message and then the exception message. And after all that, we shut down the executor. Now let's put it all together in the main method. For that we create a new variable example5 of type example5 in which we place a new instance of example5. After having done so, we call the run method. Now let's build and run the application. And here we can see our task running for 2000 milliseconds, being checked every 500 milliseconds, which results in 4 checks, and after that the result of 42. To sum up what we've discussed in this video, we first made sure we understand the basics of Java futures. Then, we created a couple of code examples starting with a simple example of a task that we submitted to an executor enabling us to use the get method for our results. We then created another example building upon the first example, but instead of getting the result from the future, we set an atomic variable from within the task. After that, we created another example in which we cancel the task after 800 milliseconds that normally would run 2000 milliseconds. Then we created another example of a task that times out after 800 milliseconds. 
The fifth example that we created consisted of a non-blocking code that checks for its completion every 500 milliseconds using the isDone method. All right, I hope I could bring you a step nearer to make use of Java futures the right way. Don't be shy, tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. Also, share your experiences with futures and if this is a way in Java that you make use of or will make use of in your future projects. If you found some value in the contents of this video, hit the like button. Also, subscribe to this channel as this is the best way to get notified about future videos just like this one. I would like to thank you very much for watching. My name is Gene. See you in the next video.